Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. It's actually a video that is summarizing what that is actually happening to us here on this um, very earth. And this one says that the upcoming Great War, in bracket it says Al Malhama, okay? The upcoming Great War. Wow, I believe that some of the things in a sense happening here might have in a sense its root source in a sense from this um, very video. This is not just to scare us, but it is just to prepare our mind towards the unseen or towards some of the things that are currently happening to us and believers all over the world so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or belief or even religion but this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check out this account of the upcoming great war antonio guterres remarked that the world is living in the shadow of nuclear catastrophe the world seems to have wantonly chosen to be oblivious of this horrible imminent herald that is approaching or might be at our doorstep. The amount of devastation caused by the two world wars is before our eyes. The eruption of a third world war will be quite browbeating and horrendous. The third world war will definitely involve the countries which are armed with nuclear weapons. The weapons of mass destruction will also be used in the coming nuclear fight. Allah says, then watch for the day when the sky will bring a visible smoke covering the people. This is a painful torment. And there is no city, but that we will destroy it before the day of resurrection or punish it with a severe punishment that has ever been in the register inscribed. The hadith describe the malhama as being a war in which 99 out of 100 people will die. This cannot happen in a conventional war. This is a war in which weapons of mass destruction will be used. Thermonuclear, bio and space weapons. Also, the malhama has been described as when the birds will fall down from the sky. Again, this is not something that can happen in conventional wars. This phenomenon can only take place when the atmosphere is saturated with so much radiation that birds are unable to navigate their way using the Earth's magnetic field. Therefore, the Malhama is the nuclear world war. The Roman Christians will launch three invasions against the Muslims in the end of time. The third and final invasion, known as Malham al-Kubra, is the largest in scale. What leads to the first Romans, Europeans invasion of the Muslim lands? Abu Dhar said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there will be, from Bani Umayyah, a man in Egypt who will succeed the Sultan, ruler. He will be overpowered or stripped off power. So he flees to the Romans, Europe. So they accept him and honor him. There are 20 months from the day he leaves to the Romans until he comes with the Roman ships to Alexandria. This is the beginning of the battles with the Romans. The Romans will come in their ships. The people of Egypt will ask the people of Hashem for help. They, Romans and Muslims, will meet and fight fiercely. The Muslims will defeat the Romans after exerting a tremendous effort. 
Then they, Romans, amass a big army and disembark in Jaffa, Jaffa, in Palestine, and advance 10 miles in Palestine. Its people, the Palestinians, will seek refuge with their children in the mountains. The Muslims will meet the Romans, defeat them, and slay their king. In the second war, the Romans, after their defeat in the first battle, will amass an army larger than their first army. Then they will head and disembark in Acre, Acre in Palestine. They will have chosen as a king, the son of their king who was slayed. He will meet the Muslims in the battlefield in Acre, Acre. Victory for the Muslims will be withheld for 40 days. So the people of Hashem will ask for help from the people of all Muslim lands. There will be slowness in sending support armies. On the Roman side, there will not be a Christian free man or slave who will not go to help the Romans. So one third of people of Hashem will flee and one third will be slayed and Allah will grant victory to those remaining third. The Muslims will defeat the Romans such a defeat that has never been heard of before, and they will slay the king of the Romans. In the third war, the Romans will choose the son of their slayed king, who will be so young that he has not reached puberty yet. They will love him so much. He will send armies with troops in much larger numbers than the two previous kings. They will disembark in the valley of Antioch, the Muslims will gather across from them. They will fight for two months. Then Allah will grant victory to the Muslims, so they will defeat the Romans. A large faction of the Christians will accept Islam. You will then make a firm truce with the Romans until you and they wage a campaign against an enemy that is attacking them. You will be granted victory and great spoils. Then you will alight in a plain surrounded by hills. There, someone from the Romans shall say, The cross has overcome. Whereupon, someone from among the Muslims shall say, Nay, Allah has overcome, and shall go and break the cross. The Romans shall slay him. Then the Muslims shall take up arms, and the two sides shall fall upon each other. The Romans shall say to their leader, We shall relieve you of the Arabs, and they shall gather up for the great battle, Armageddon. They shall come to you under 80 flags, nations, or groups, each flag gathering 12,000 troops, 960,000 soldiers in total. Before the great war begins, Europe will come to the Muslims and will say, do not stand between us and those who took prisoners from amongst us. Let us fight with them, hoping to avoid the greater battle by only taking the European Muslims who converted. The Muslims will refuse by saying, By Allah, we will never hand over our Muslim brothers. The Romans will then attack Syria, causing heavy casualties. A hadith says, The Romans will then say during the war, we will not cease fighting you until you bring out to us everyone among you whose origin is not from you. They will try to take back and imprison the non-Arab Muslims, many of whom are from Europe having converted to Islam. So the European Muslim who converted will come out and say, Allah forbid that we should go back to unbelief after Islam. The oppression of Europe during the end of times is prophesied in the Bible. It will be a cause for many in Europe to search for the truth, for a religion that has been preserved from its first days and isn't oppressive. They will accept Islam, leaving Europe in the path it has chosen for itself. The Europeans will then begin the Great War, and that is when Allah Azza wa Jal will send down his punishment on them three times during the Great War. Then finally, 
Allah will grant the Muslims victory. A third of the Muslim army will first flee, and Allah will never accept from them repentance, tawbah. A third will be slayed during the war, and they will be the noblest martyrs in the sight of Allah. The surviving third will be victorious, never to suffer defeat thereafter. Yusayr ibn Jabir narrated, the enemy will muster against the Muslims, and the Muslims will muster strength against them. I said, you mean Rome? He said, yes, and there will be a terrible fight. The Muslims will prepare a detachment, which will not return unless victorious. They will fight until darkness intervenes. What remains of both sides will return without being victorious, and both will have been wiped out. The Muslims will again prepare a detachment for fighting unto death so that they may not return unless victorious. When it is the fourth day, a new detachment from the remnant of the Muslims will be prepared and Allah will decree that the enemy will be routed. The Bible similarly says they will be captured. They would fight such a fight the like of which has not been seen. So fierce that even if a bird were to pass their flanks, it would fall down dead before reaching the other end. The fighting will be so fierce between these huge armies, in contrast to other wars, that most will be slayed in four days, nearly two million soldiers. There will be such a large scale annihilation that when counting will be done, only one out of a hundred men related to one another would be found alive. So what can be the joy at the spoils of such war and what inheritance can be divided? The Muslims will eventually win the great war and go on to conquer the lands of Europe. They, Muslims, will not pass any city without conquering it by declaring Allah's greatness. They will conquer these lands using dhikr, without fighting. Then after some time, they will hear of a calamity. A cry will reach them. The Dajjal has taken your place among your offspring. They will therefore throw away what is in their hands and go forward, sending ten horsemen as a scouting party. Allah's apostle, peace be upon him, said, I know their names, the names of their forefathers and the color of their horses. They will be the best horsemen on the surface of the earth on that day, or among the best horsemen on the surface of the earth on that day. Wow. Guys, this is a very interesting um, video, listening to the upcoming um, Great War. Of course, we have listened to this very um, account, this very um, narration. But then for all we know is that just like how the Bible have already informed us that when the end in a sense comes that nation will rise against nation, kingdoms will rise against a kingdom, and then there will be farmer mind in a sense all over the places. And then some of these things in a sense we have witnessed it, or should I say this is what we are currently uh, witnessing here on this um, very earth. Now, this video have highlighted in a sense so many um, events or occurrences that will take place or have already take place but then in some of these innocent event is for us to understand that what the end in a stand is near the end is close or shall i say the end has come now we have learned about in a sense this very great war talking about in a stand nations in a sense having weapons of mass destruction as one of the signs in a sense of the last day because when all these things are happening for us to know that the end is coming um closer now when you look at understand this hadith that was talking about that was narrated by the sahaba then talking about in a sense some of this account that will take place then that got me in a sense thinking i'm asking myself that okay if these things in a sense were to be true 
that all these things is going to happen weapons of mass um, destruction will be used it means just like how the video says that even the bed will not be able to navigate through the magnetic law of um, gravity right so now when you look at in lesson all these things then you ask yourself and says that are this country going to use these um, weapons that is maybe probably at the world war three right and then maybe probably the whole world in a sense may be destroyed right so if the whole world in a sense is being destroyed are we going to send back to the ages of the stones that they will start using in a sense the sword and then the rest of it because when you look at it in a sense at the moment People don't even go into war, you know, by using some of those things anymore. They make use of what drones, they make use of bombs and then the rest of it, right? So if you understand, we says that this is what is going to happen. So does it mean that this very account talking about you understand the Romans, you understand fall and then the Muslim you understand winning the war? What happens to the falling down of Constantinople that was prophesied by um, Prophet Muhammad? Don't you think that maybe probably the time that was predicted for all this will have already happened already? Because some of these things in the sense was being narrated in the sense to the Sahaba. So don't you think that maybe probably the time have already passed? Because in this very our dispensation, nobody in a sense used in a sense the sword or some of those things in a stand here for anything. At the moment, it's all about drones right so don't you think that some of those things in a sense have already passed and then of what interest in a sense would it be for a muslim in a sense to win a war in a sense by capturing in a sense europe what does europe in a sense that muslim have to gain in a sense by capturing in a sense europe it's of no importance because if you have to look at the islamic in a sense teachings then from there it's all about in a sense us to realize that of course we have a place in a sense in heaven and if we have a place in heaven what is the point of us in a sense trying to fight one another in order for us to gain a particular territory all those things in a sense are unnecessary and that's why even if you look at in a sense even from the message of our prophet muhammad it was not necessary about um going fighting taking over places and all those it's about spreading the message in the sense of God and that's why when you look at it in the sense recently you could see um, some of the Islamic um, scholars such as um, Mufti Meg, um, Suleiman Omar and the rest of it you could look at and understand the crusade that they had that a lot of um, should I say millions of people in a sense we are taking Shahada nobody fought such a war in a sense by picking up you understand any ammunition or anything no it's about in a sense spreading the word this is what in a sense that we are bound to do so the whole question is if all these things in a sense what happens to be the truth then at what point with imam madi comes or have the mad imam madi that is being expected that is based on the islamic in a sense belief has he come already or is yet to come so will he come before the war or to come after the war but then at the end of the day, I just felt like, you understand, whether he has come or he has not come. All those things, you understand, they are not necessary. As a matter of fact, the only thing I can just say to you is that just prepare your mind so that at any time that God calls you, you know that, yes, you are have a good right standing, in a stand with him. So that whenever you are giving your own account, when your judgment day comes, then at least you can be able to what, make it to paradise. But then in following, in a sense, some of these things, I feel like it could be things that have already happened before because as the falling down of Constantinople the falling down of the Roman Empire some of those things have already happened in a stand long ago so I think that the wars that may be won in a sense in this very um, 21st century may not be necessary about in a sense, using the weapons of mass destruction as a matter of fact I may tell you this that you see this World War 3 that has been expected the World War 3 may not even come that's just the truth about it it may not even come so the only thing i can just say to you is that just prepare your mind because the nature in which in a sense war i've been fought is not by using ammunition because at the end of the day you want to change people in a sense to start believing in what you think you believe and then if you want to do so it's not always by using force but it's about in a sense using different strategy speak to them and then probably change their mind and that's why you see muslim you understand or should i say islam you understand have truly in a sense spread in a sense across the world and then if you look at in a sense for most of the countries in a sense that actually accepted um islam
in those countries that should be having over 100, 200, or even 300 million, you understand, Muslim, you realize that in those respective countries, nobody fought by using any ammunition or by using any sword. It's about, in a sense, speaking to them. So that happens to be the best way of doing it and not necessarily about fighting one another. Because here on this very world, all the innocent we keep preaching, all that we keep talking about is about, in a sense, us living in, a sense, in peace and love one another, which is actually the best thing and not necessarily about engaging in war because in war nobody actually wins and nobody will, uh, will win because if you look at war wars are mainly based on ideologies right and then for you to be able to kill an ideology is very difficult so all i could say is that get yourself prepared with god so that at any time you are called you will meet him you understand with a good um, heart all right so I know that a lot of you have thought and opinion in a sense concerning this and then some of you will maybe probably disagree in a sense with me but then you can help me at the comment section by telling me that at what point in a sense would we expect in a sense imam madi at what point are we expecting it drop it at the comment section and may god bless you as you do so so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye